Hello and welcome to the seventh video in this series for beginners programming a tile puzzle game on the iPad using Cocos 2D and iOS. In this video we're not going to do any code, we're going to have a look at how we're going to lay out the tile game on the iPad screen. So here I have a schematic of the laypad, lay, laypad, the layout of the iPad screen with its outer box here is the actual screen with the bottom left point being 0 by 0 and the top right being 1024 by 768. In the middle here, the sort of orangey brown box here is the what would be the tile board. So this is the square that the tiles will be laid out on. It's 704 by 704 and is placed in exactly the middle of the screen. And what's important is the bottom left point, which is 160 across by 32 up. So if I go down a bit and actually have a look at the schematic of how the tiles will be laid out on the screen will be laid out by so. So we'll have five rows of five, although at the top right here there'll actually be one missing because we need a space to shuffle tiles around. And what we have to think about is various para um, coordinate parameters or constants we'll need for actually laying out these tiles on the grid in this way. So we'll have a border all the way around and we'd like the border to be the same top bottom, left and right, and we also have a gap in between the tiles which, although it's not on this diagram, we'd like in the real thing to be the same. So if we have a look at what we actually have, we have the tiles that have a width of 130. There are five of them, so we have 650 pixels taken up by the tiles. So that leaves us 54 pixels free across to play with. So if we give ourselves a nice border of 15, there are two borders in each direction because you've got to take in account the two sides. That leaves us 24 pixels of space between the tiles and we've got four spaces between the tiles. One, two, three, four. Whoops, I've moved some tiles there. Which means we can have a gap of six between each tile. So if we think about that in sort of programming terms, terms we're going to want a way to be able to say for a given tile where is its bottom left corner going to be positioned. And it's actually quite simple. What I have here is we can say already that the tile 1 here will be positioned at 160 plus 15 in the x direction. In the y of course it will be 160, uh, sorry 32 plus 15 because we've got the border here as well. And then the tile 2 is simply 160 plus 15 plus the width of a tile plus the border, which takes us to the next point on this tile here, but multiplied by 1, and then tile 3 would be the same again, but if you multiplied this bit in brackets, you then get this left-hand point here, and so on. So you can see there's a formula building itself up there. And essentially, we could put this section in brackets here, multiplied by naught on the first one, line for tile 1 to have a consistent formula and we do the same in the y direction. And the way that we'd apply this formula is actually using two C syntax arrays like this. So we would simply get for a given tile on an index of 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to an index of 25 in the empty corner here, sorry 24 in the empty corner here because it's 0 base and so 0 to 24. We can find out using this array what row on what column respective tile is on. So we can say if it's on like tile 1 is on row naught and column naught then if we're finding out the x we would multiply by the column so we would be multiplying this by naught and get 160 plus 15. If it was on column 1 we'd multiply by 1 this would be the multiplier here and for the y direction we do the same as the row. So this is how we'll be laying our tiles out and we'll be using these arrays in the program in this kind of structure with a couple of formulas, very simple functions, just to be able to position and move our tiles. So for example, if the user swiped right on this tile to move it from here to here, the illusion will be that the finger is making the tile move and when the finger lifts it finishes in position. But actually what will happen is when a swipe is detected, it'll move anyway and we'll use these arrays here with a little formula to tell it what it's, which position it's got to move to. Okay, so that's it for this video. It's just a quick diversion explanation of how we're going to set the 
program up in the next video we'll actually get on with the coding thanks very much for listening comments questions criticisms welcome as always on youtube